Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, I'm Central Sakurai, and in this video we're going to talk about Canon FD lenses and how to convert them to EF mount. Also, we're going to talk about how to accessorize them a little bit for cinema use by adding uh, lens gears and front caps to make them more usable as a cinema glass. Now, this is a follow-up video to a video I made in the past over vintage glass and why I prefer to shoot on that over the modern, more sharp glass. Um, if you want to go check out that video, you can do so over here. Um, but this is kind of a follow-up video because I keep getting a lot of questions about which lenses to buy and how to exactly convert the EF mount. Now, there's a couple ways you can do that, um, and I'm going to talk about those in this video. My friend actually just recently bought the Canon FD 55mm f1.2. It's a lens I recommend often because I really like this lens. Um, first off, it goes all the way to f1.2, which is really nice. It gets crazy bokeh and shallow depth of field. Um, it's a little long for my taste uh, for a super 35mm sensor, but it's like the perfect lens, in my opinion, for a full frame sensor. Now, I'm not going to get into all the nitty gritty details about every Canon FD lens and the differences between them, but I'm going to talk about the differences when it comes to mounting them um, on an EF camera and uh, basically how what you need to buy and purchase to make these work right on your EF mounts. The first thing that you need to know when you're going into converting these to EF mount is which type of Canon FD lens you are buying. So there's Canon FD breech lock mount lenses and there's FDN lenses. The FDN lenses is the more modern version. When I say modern, we're talking like the 80s here, um, 80s and 90s mount. Um, it is it's not gonna have a silver ring on the back like this one. See how this one has a silver ring on the back? This is a different locking mechanism, even though it's like technically the same mount. So Canon FD lenses were obviously designed to go on old uh, 35 millimeter cameras like this one. And when they go on and when they lock on, they actually have to press this silver button on the side here um, to disengage it, just like any other lens really. And you twist it, but when you twist it like that, there's this, there's this uh, little lever in here that when it goes on, this lever right here actually gets pulled when you're mounting the lens and that actually makes it where the aperture can work on the lens. It's not an aperture, it's not a free moving aperture before you put it on the lens. So on this one, the, this, this, technically this silver breech lock lens is the same as this FDN lens, but this one you actually just twist the ring to lock it on versus twisting the whole lens to lock it on. That's really the only differences. So when you're going, you know, basically you're gonna to need to go on eBay or something like that to buy one of these used lenses. They're fairly affordable depending on what lens you get. Um, some of them get really expensive because they're more sought after because they are they match very close to the Canon K35 cinema lenses, which are like $180,000 lenses. Um, so you'll see a lot of those, they're kind of pricey on eBay, but something like this, like this 50 millimeter F1.8, this is 50 bucks. They're everywhere. You can get on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, or you're gonna be able to find one of these immediately and buy one if you want to try this lens out. But the, the one I would recommend is definitely the 55 one um, or another one in, in my kit is the 35 F2. These are the ones I use a lot. But anyways, let's talk about modding these. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can go to shapeways.com and buy a 3D printed mount. That's the one I have on this 35 millimeter here. Now I've only tried these 3D printed mounts on the FDN lenses and not the breech lock lenses like this one. But we're gonna try that here today and see if these 3D printed mounts can work on the breech lock. Another way you can convert these is to go to scimodlens.com. Um, they are not a sponsor of the channel or anything. They are just the only people actually making these conversion kits right now, basically. Um, Ed Micah used to make them, and it turns out that Ed Micah has now teamed up with Scimod to make them for their brand. And so this is a kit, um, I believe it costs like $125, $150 US. Um, and this is gonna give you a different material mount. I can't remember what it's called exactly, this material, but it's a really durable material, really lightweight. Um, but it, it's gonna be more durable than the 3D printed mount that you might get on shapeways.com. The shapeways mount is only like $12, $12, $15 or something like that. It was $12 when I bought it. I don't know how much it costs now. Um, and it's probably gonna wear out a lot faster because it is 3D printed versus this one um, that should be a little bit better material. Now, the good thing about getting the Simod lens kit is that's gonna come with your mount. And it's also gonna come with the aperture arm, which is you're gonna need in order to be able to manually change the aperture on the lens because it's not gonna be mounted to a Canon uh, FD mount camera. Also it comes with a couple screws, which is nice because normally you have to use the screws that already come in your lens, but sometimes when you get those out, they can break, they're very old. Um, so it's nice that they include the screws. But this is a much more expensive option compared to the 3D printed mount, so we're just gonna kinda talk about the pros and cons here and see if we can even get this 3D printed mount on a breech lock lens like this. What I do recommend, um, I have used these 3D printed mounts on heavier lenses, like my 24 millimeter f1.4, 
And there is a little bit of give on this on the EF mount on the camera. So I'd say if you're going to use the 3D printed mounts, you're going to want to use it on one of these smaller Canon FDN lenses because they're very affordable and they work really well and there's no give. But the heavier the lens get, like even this 55, this is probably twice as heavy as this 35 right here. But I think the kind of the plus side of using these small lenses is that they're just really tiny. When you're using these kind of modern tiny cameras, it's nice just to have the smaller lens and not deal with a big lens like this. Okay. So first things first is we're gonna have to take apart this lens. I've done this in the past, but this should be a little bit more of a high quality video. Um, it's pretty simple, honestly. Just remember that when you do take this apart, it's gonna be hard to get back together if you wanna use it on a Canon FD camera again. Um, I would say that buy this lens and make sure that, that its only use case is actually gonna be on your cinema camera or a modern digital camera with an EF mount. Now these Canon FD lenses have a, a clicked aperture in them. Whereas when we turn it into a cinema lens, we are going to de-click that so you have full control over your aperture um, and you can uh, change your exposure very fluidly like this. No clicks there. We're actually going to take out a ball bearing that makes those clicks go away. Okay, so first things first on this one. I have not done this in a while, so we were just going to bust into it. But I think what we have to do here is we have to take these screws out the side here. Now, I already have one of these screw uh, screwdrivers that I used for, I think it was like to break into an old MacBook Pro or something like that. This is a two, a, a number two screwdriver. I don't know what that means, but it's a very small screwdriver that's gonna work on these really small screws that are on the Canon FD lens. And something else I like to do is I take a lens cap, a back lens cap, and I use that to collect all my screws. Um, and maybe if you're real nervous about it, take your iPhone out or something and film the process of doing this or take pictures along the way so you don't forget where screws go and stuff like that. But this is pretty simple. Honestly, this, this lens mount only comes with four screws and the one that I'm using over here on the FD lenses only has the screws that come with it. There's only three screws on this one. Um, so it's really not that big of a deal. You just have to remember that that entire FD mount uh, on the back is going to be removed from the lens. Just gotta put lots of pressure on it. So the next step here is that we're gonna wanna find, when we twist this, you're gonna wanna find the screws inside these three holes here. Let's take a break to talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to present your work online. Now, once you start making creative and beautiful work with your freshly modified Canon FD lens, you're gonna need a website to put this work on. And that's where Squarespace comes in. If you've never built a website before, they have pre-built templates to get you going, but they give you the tools to build an entire website from scratch. I built my Squarespace website almost 10 years ago, and I've been putting my work on there ever since. That's probably because their platform is just so easy to use for filmmakers. I'm able to just quickly update my videos on the website using their video embed options, and I can move and reformat those videos however I please. Well, if you're anything like me and you need a place to put all your videos, well, just build it with Squarespace. Click the link in the description to get 10% off, and thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, so this is actually the following day because I had a couple technical difficulties when starting this conversion. Actually, I would say that my little uh, flathead screwdriver that I was using wasn't quite good enough for these old screws. And so I went out and purchased a new set of screwdrivers. It's just good to have the proper tools for the job. But even then I still couldn't get one of these screws out. So something to be thinking about is that you're gonna need to use a lot of pressure and be very careful with these screws because they're probably pretty old. I mean, these are 40 year old lenses after all. To get enough pressure on there without hurting my hand, I took an oven mitt and put it but between me and the screwdriver and I put a lot of pressure on the screw to get it out. But now I finally got it out. And so now we can finish this conversion. So these are much easier to use too than these over here. These are a little bit cheaper ones from China. These were just from Walmart, but they have this top on here that can spin. Um, and so you can put your finger on top of it and you can just stick the screwdriver in there and spin it with pressure very easily.
Well, I started twisting and it came off, which is good. I did lose a spring in the midst of it. Sorry, Easton. So now that we've got the actual breech lock mechanism off, which usually has a spring inside of it, here's one here. It has this little tab inside of it too. You can save these things for later if you're gonna keep them. If you wanna keep them for potentially putting the mount back on. But like I recommended before, I would not recommend putting the mount back on. I would just convert these for EF and leave them like that forever. Well, after getting inside uh, Easton's lens here, we there's a bunch of fungus and dust and it's actually a pretty nasty lens. So it's just something to think about when you are going to buy one of these. Um, you can get a dud, basically, one that you may not want to use. Um, you, I don't know if you can see that here, but there's a bunch of dust particles that actually came loose when I was trying to unmount that mount. And I mean, it must be fungus or dust uh, that's just literally like laying in there now. So this probably isn't gonna be a lens that he's gonna use, but I'm going to go through the process of modding it anyway, so you can just see how it works. Next, we need to get under this piece so we can install the aperture arm and de-click the aperture. We're going to take the mount off of my 35 millimeter just to see if it will work on the 55. I have a feeling it won't because this is a breech lock versus the FDN. We are going to give it a try anyways. We're going to use this old FD lens case here. The screws almost line up, but it doesn't seem like this mount is wide enough for this lens. Yeah, this mount will not work. Noted. That uh, confirms that the 3D printed mount from Shapeways is not going to work on a 55 millimeter breech lock, which means it'll probably not work on most of the other breech lock lenses as well. That's why on Shapeways it says that it is made for an FDN lens only. Okay, so let's finish the Simod kit here. Even though we're, this lens isn't gonna work. I think you paid probably $215 for this lens and it is so nasty inside. I think when I was banging on it, I shook all that fungus loose. If this lens was taken apart and cleaned, it might actually be a fine lens. So what we want to do here is get the aperture blade. So basically this two prong mechanism here controls your aperture. And so how this works is that you take these two screws off here and you replace them here. And then this little arm will go down into the aperture uh, fork here. And then once we put this all back together, this will, we'll put this back on and this will actually control the aperture. See how this spins this outer ring here when it's locked in and then that will control the aperture here. Okay, simple as that. Now we just gotta put the mount on, which is super easy, because all we do is just mount it on, find the screw holes. Um, let's see here. We got one up here, one here, and one here. And they will, if they don't line up, then we are in, we need to flip the mount around until they line up. They're lining up here. So we're gonna take the new screws that were provided from the Simod kit that are over here. They actually gave us 
four of them, I think. They're not magnetic, great. I don't know what they're made out of, but they're not magnetic, which uh, is usually handy. Could always use the old screws, I suppose, too. I also recommend doing this with gloves on so you don't get fingerprints everywhere or any oil on your hand, but here I am. I just decided to do this on a whim to help Easton out, and I made a video about it. So it's obviously kind of dirty right now, but now you get the idea. We now have an EF mount on the back of this Canon FD 55 millimeter, the breech lock lens, and we have full control over the aperture on the ring on the side. And it's de-clicked. It doesn't make a little bit of a brushing sound and uh, you can get oil for these kits. You put oil on that ring in there to make this brushing sound go away. And so that's just how to do the EF mount. But if you wanted to make this more usable in a cinema environment, you know, you can get lens gears like this from Simod that are designed to just fit on the lenses. You can check those out on their website. Or like this one was 3D printed by my friend. We actually just measured the outside uh, ring and then made a 3D printed gear that will just go on using friction. Um, there's also like um, lensgear.com that will do the same thing. These are just 3D printed, kind of thin. I would recommend getting the ones that are kind of wide. That way they, basically the fall of focus will go on much easier because you, you don't have to line it up with such a skinny um, gear here. If it's wider, it just makes it a little bit easier to get those on. This is one I did because it was just 3D printed a long time ago, but I'm just gonna use it as an example to show you how it can go on the lens here. So this one's just using friction. So you simply just press it over the top talked about this on the channel before, but this is a good spot to have it all in one place. And so once you have it on there, now you can use a follow focus with this lens and you have that really nice long throw, really smooth with lots of tension. Um, so you don't actually bump, accidentally bump focus and there's no like, you know, motorized system in here to make the focus work like an autofocus lens. And then you can take a, I just bought these $5 caps off of like Amazon or B&H. That's an EF lens cap that'll fit on there. And now you have an EF modified lens. But something else you can do um, to make them all uh, cohesive across the board is to get um, step up rings on the front. These are just general step up rings that I'm using, but you can also get some from Simod or other Cord Vision is another company you can get them from that have a bigger lip on them. So you can actually use them on a map box. But this just makes it easy for putting the same size filter on all your lenses. So if I have the 77 millimeter Moment ND filter, I can just screw it on to my 35 millimeter, or I can quickly just take it off and put it onto my 55 millimeter by putting the same step up ring on all of the lenses. So I'm using a 77 millimeter step up ring here, um, but you can use like an 80 millimeter or 95 millimeter, and that just makes things more cohesive across the board. So just a quick recap, if you're gonna be using a breech lock lens with the silver ring on the back, you're probably gonna to wanna to use a Simod lens kit in order to modify it for EF. And you're probably gonna want one of these anyways, they do cost a lot more money, but the material is really nice and it's going to work really well on your cameras for the foreseeable future. Whereas these 3D printed mounts that I've got from Shapeways are probably gonna wear out a little bit faster. Um, they're much thinner and they're obviously 3D printed so they're not quite as durable. But if you're using a small lens like an FDN lens like this, which is the newer version of the FD lens mount um, over the old breech lock lens mount that's on here. So this lens is pretty light. So these 3D printed mounts work really well with the lighter lenses. But when you start getting to the heavier lenses like this or the 85 millimeter um, or the 24 millimeter F1.4, um, you're going to want the nicer mount on the back. At least that's what I would recommend. Which brings me to my last point, which I get asked all the time, is what aperture arm do you need when you're using the FDN lenses in a 3D printed mount. Well, I believe there's two different types of arms on the website. Well, at least there was when I purchased my mount. Um, but I ended up using the one that was shaped more like a full arm with a longer throw at the bottom here. 
If you don't have the mount on there, they can slip out pretty easily. So this one looks a little bit too tall for this one, but it works really well once you put the mount on. The reason for that is I bet that these, um, these aperture arms are probably higher or lower depending on which FDN lens you use. So this one's kind of longer to set in multiple lenses. There's also another one that's just a longer, skinnier arm, and that one looked like it was meant for this lens, but I could not get it to work very well with the aperture blades. I would actually just recommend buying both of them just in case um, one doesn't work, but I think this one will mostly work with most FDN lenses. But you will need an aperture arm in order to control your aperture. Um, that's basically a non-negotiable with this. So I bet you actually want to see this lens mounted on an EF camera. So if we put this all together right, it should mount on there just like this. You're going to have the aperture uh, markings facing out like this, and then you're going to rotate it in like a normal EF lens. And then we have the aperture control. And by converting it this way, you should have infinity focus and you don't have to worry about adapters. Well, this was just a quick video going over how to convert a Canon FD lens to EF mount. Um, and the various ways you can do it. Uh, I just get this question asked a lot in my direct messages and in the comments on YouTube. So I thought I would just make a video putting it all in one place. I'm sorry if it wasn't a totally perfect video, but that's kind of the point. When you're going through and you're learning how to do this yourself, there is a learning curve to it. So you kind of have to figure things out on your own. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, uh, subscribe to the channel, obviously. And I will have links in the description below to all the parts that I use in this video, um, as well as many different places that you can get lens gears, um, step up rings, as well as the EF mounts. And until next time, guys, I'm Sindra Sakurai. See ya.